When I first hear artificial intelligence, I think of iRobot. I'm sorry, Dave. I'm afraid I can't do that. And then you have actual artificial intelligence, which is self-driving cars, human facial recognition patterns. Back in the, I don't know, 70s, that was sci-fi. Now it's real. Having a robot without AI is like having Microsoft Office, but having no laptop. Yeah, you've got the software, you have everything to make it function, but you don't actually have anything for it to live in, for it to function. It has to have a body, it has to have a host. A full artificial intelligence that has no input from humans, because that's pretty much what we're considering AI at this point. It's just, it all is just code that you're depicting a yes or no answer to. I can't run four billion factors in my head. Computer can. In all reality, a machine is going to be be able to make better choices. Maybe not morally better choices, statistically better choices. So it's going to pick the thing that has the most chance of survival for the most people. People are going to make different decisions based on morals, based on like that sixth sense that you cannot give a robot. Until we as a human population can decide what is right and what is wrong and stop thinking of everything as relative. If we can't decide on that, then how can we have artificial intelligence decide for themselves? You can't give a computer a moral compass. You can give it statistics and say, hey, this is the best outcome statistically. Coming from a practical standpoint, I can see the uses of uploading someone's mind into a computer and using them as intelligence for later generations. That's a little terrifying to me. Coming from my religious background, I like to think that once you're gone, you move on to another place and you leave this world behind. And to think that instead of leaving this world and your body behind you instead become uploaded. A lot of nursing isn't just the science, like drugs and stuff like that. It's the feelings, the emotional aspects, and mentally helping these patients get better. And I don't think they can fully get to a point where they can understand that and respond to the patient's full set of needs. Self-driving cars are really interesting to me, mostly because they they aren't really self-driving to an extent because the computer is controlled by a human. And so if you think about it, it's based off of past experience and past choices that a human made, not what the car itself is making at that moment. I'm not sure if I would ever own a self-driving car. I mean, who knows, but I like being in control. I like being behind the wheel and feeling the car move and knowing that what I'm doing, I like being in focus. That's the point of artificial intelligence where it's where we can have a computer that plays chess but it doesn't really think for itself in the way that a human makes neural pathways. I think the fact that computers control the prices that we would like to set for our own businesses is kind of ridiculous. Anything, any new technology usually just makes our jobs easier and more complicated at the same time. So we're only as good as what we can come up with and do ourselves. Even if a man is operating this robot, it's knocked out hundreds of jobs that were used to be mindless, screwing on toothpaste caps or doing whatever that is now autonomous. It's just going to take us out of, hopefully, more dangerous situations and keep us safer. So yeah, the stock market and financials are very um, numbers-based, but they're not particularly always numbers-based. There's always something more to it. My name is Daniel Brooks. I'm a marketing and communication specialist with a bachelor's in film. My name is Jessica Stein and I am president of Catholic Campus Ministries. My name is Abby Eskridge and I'm an education student. My name is Ashley Allen and I'm a nursing student. My name is Alex Rogers and I'm a loss prevention analyst.